Uganda has on several occasions been hit by animal diseases including anthrax, scabies and Ebola, with cases of this registered. This is because of the quick and timely interventions made whenever the outbreak takes place. But this does not give Ugandans liberty to live a reckless life, interacting with wild animals or even feeding on them. Health patterns now call for a continuous research on wildlife diseases to allow Ugandans to take early precautions against such outbreaks. Dr. Gladys Kalema Zikusoka is the Chief Executive Officer and founder of Conservation with Public Health. She says human health is very crucial in conserving wildlife to avoid spreading diseases, especially in the proximity of national parks. You can't protect the gorillas or conserve them without improving the health of the people who they share a habitat with. Why do gorillas and people make each other sick? We share over 98% genetic material, which means we can make each other sick. It's easy for people to go to the doctor, but it's not easy for the gorilla to go to the doctor. You have to go to them, that them, they run away, they're scared, they don't understand what's going on. So it's much easier to prevent that disease going to them than having to go and treat them. But how do you detect the infection in the animals? Dr. Kalema says the physical signs of the animal are taken based on appearance which tickles researchers to institute investigations in animals and subsequently in human. The only way you can prove that it's come from people is by taking the samples from the animals, the wildlife and the people and then using the same tests and through genetic studies you can be able to trace the actual source. And that requires actually a lot of resources um, and we are continuing to look for money and funding to be able to support this research on a long term. These are student researchers from the College of Veterinary Medicine and Animal Biodiversity, COVAB, summer course organized by Makerere University, preparing to carry out an immobilization exercise in Queen Elizabeth National Park. This is always a great opportunity for students to do research on wildlife. But experts say lack of funds has constrained long-term research, leaving researchers with only short-term research, mainly for passing and completing their courses. A lot of researchers just do short-term projects and go away because they don't have enough money to do long-term projects or they're not intending. They're doing research for a master's or a PhD, but we're trying to set up in partnership with Uganda Wildlife Authority long-term research studies so that we can study these things in the long term. And we see as people's health is improving, as gorilla's health improving, as, you know, different issues. During the COVID summer course, research students are briefed about wildlife disease affect the national park and the current transboundary disease surveillance efforts for bovine tuberculosis and food and mouth disease in the park. Yeah, in Queen Elizabeth, this, this, this is the, some problem which is happening in the elephants. The, the tail starts to rot hmm? and it keeps dropping off piece by piece at the joint and eventually the whole tail is gone. Then you have a very huge wound on the, on the anus. That, that is one of the typical cases. Before practical exercise is carried out, first is a brief review of chemical immobilization of species to be targeted as part of ongoing such disease surveillance projects in Queen Elizabeth National Park. You are putting the animal's life at risk. Number two, you are putting your own life at risk. Number three, you are putting the lives of the personnel who are working with you at risk. And uh, if you are the one in charge of the program, we are going to have to make sure that everybody is safe. Somebody who is putting on gloves needs to remove the tongue, pull it on one side. During the immobilization exercise, students are divided in two groups with specific roles and a lead veterinarian to take samples for studying. One of such wildlife disease is the anthrax outbreak that killed 300 hippopotami and 50 buffaloes in the Queen Elizabeth National Park in 2004-2005. And in the recent anthrax outbreak of 2010 that lasted for over six months in the same area, 89 hippopotami died, 8 buffaloes and 1 giant forest hog. But the challenge is how to overcome the problem. 
all this time, they were saying people dying, they were saying this is natural. And then they just say natural death, natural causes. So then, eventually, you realize that actually the number of the hippos was increasing. So they were like, hey, maybe this is not natural. So what is happening? By the time the report went to Kampala, they started mobilizing resources. And when the first team was sent to do diagnosis, it was here. And the first team did a misdiagnosis. And when they said, ah, this may not be the case, it was already there. Finally, when they actually realized that hippos were dying of anthrax, the outbreak was dying. When a hippo dies, for example, other hippos get affected, people who like eating hippos get affected, and cattle that graze near where the hippos are sick also get affected because the spores are very resilient. They can last for 100 years, but they can be destroyed through very intensive burning and through adding lime on them. So what happens when there's an anthrax outbreak? The only way to stop it is by burying the hippos and covering them with lime or by burning them. But to burn a hippo can take so many jerry cans of diesel. Unfortunately, communities such as these living around the lake shores and use the waters that are habitat to hippopotami in and around the national park have continued to consume water, feed on wild animals, calling for increased sensitization and continuous alertness whenever there is a disease outbreak. One health approach is therefore very important in addressing human, animal and ecosystem health together to avoid spreading sickness to each other. If this is followed, it will be the cheapest measure to wipe out Ebola and other wildlife-related diseases. Stephen Mwiri, WBS News.